uh, water and uh, food and the food revolution. There we go. And uh, so this is us here. And uh, we figured we would just stop, uh, go live and go from there. So That's right. So as yeah. you can see, we've got dueling cameras we've here. We've got dueling Look at that. cameras. Look yeah, we're, that. Both, we're both <laughs> filming live. So we'll be looking back and forth a little bit. Fabulous. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So here we go. Um, yeah. Hi, folks. This is Dr. Kat Fryer of uh, Water System News. And I'm here with the amazing Ocean Robbins at Ryan Eliason's Social Entrepreneurship Empowerment Experience. Um, and you were one of um, Ryan's first social entrepreneur experiments, right? You two actually started a, an organization together. Why don't you tell us about Yes? Well, we founded a nonprofit called Yes when uh, we were teenagers. I was 15 and Ryan was 18. And uh, we got this crazy notion we wanted to create the biggest possible change in the world in the least possible amount of time. So we decided to organize a national tour speaking to school assemblies about the environment and how young people could be agents of positive change on the planet. And we ended up reaching over 650,000 students in schools across the U.S. and around the world. And then the organization evolved and grew and we ended up uh, organizing summer camps and events we call JAMS for groups of young change makers in over nice. 65 countries. Ryan stayed with the organization for a couple of years. We really founded it together. And then he moved on because he wanted to focus on how to make money. I wanted to focus on how to change the world. So our paths <laughs> kind of diverged. And then years later, we kind of came together as he right. came on the theme of social entrepreneurship and how you can make a living and make a difference. Now, you told a story here that I had not heard before about what was the catalyst that caused you to move out of the, well, I'm making enough as it is, heading an environmental organization, now I need to make money again with a certain notorious individual in New York City. Right. Yes. Yeah, well, so my, my, our family, um, you know, my... my Dad was a best-selling author and had built a bit of a nest egg, which I thought was going to be there to care for our special needs twins when they got older. And then uh, what happened was that um, our, my family's life savings was basically annihilated in the Bernard Madoff scandal in 2008. 99% of my parents' resources kind of evaporated overnight. Yeah. And uh, suddenly we were left, you know, struggling to figure out how to survive. And um, that was the catalyst. I looked at the nonprofit salary I was making and I said you know it's nice that we're making such a difference but how are we ever going to have the resources to really care for our kids long term and uh, to rebuild after this loss and um, and then I also thought how can I make the biggest difference that I can I didn't want to compromise on my desire to change the world but I did want to see how could I change the world in a way that also supported our family on a deeper level that wasn't dependent on grant making and philanthropy to be able to sustain, sustain our work and our, our service yeah. And so I uh, wound up joining with my dad directly in launching the Food Revolution Network in 2012, and Ryan played an instrumental role, and in Ryan Eliason, in helping kind of give a lot of the strategy for yeah. our initial launch. Yeah. And, um, and that's really where Water Citizen came from, is really looking at the work that I had been doing in, in developing educational program, Department of Energy, National Academy of Sciences, and everything, and seeing yeah. what was going on in this coaching online education, uh, online entrepreneurship world at that time taking advantage of these new technologies like these two phones that we're using here <laughs> right, right. Um, to, and my arm's falling to, uh, oops, sorry, <laughs> here we go, um, to uh, yeah. uh, really just just reach out to, and we can see right sure. now we've got Morgana Ray, hi Morgana, and a bunch of other folks, hi, right. um, you know, yeah. watching us live and this is yeah. incredibly power how, how, how we can connect directly with people. Now, right. I, I did want to ask you about the very first summit. You did get a little bit of help. Some folks stepped up to help you guys get that first one off the ground. Oh, and yeah. How did, how did that start? And how, what did you think it was going to be when you first started? And how did it turn out that very first one? Well, we really followed the model Ryan gave us to a T. I mean, we really did. And, you know, so we invited, you know, guest speakers and you know, in any endeavor, you, le you look at the resources you have to work with, and right. you start from there, right? So in our case, we had, um, you know, my dad was a best-selling author. He knew mm -hmm. some wonderful people. And so we were able to invite them to come on board to be interviewed, to mm -hmm. bring their expertise and their celebrity credibility uh -huh. to create an amazing set of interviews. And you always have to lead with content. Yeah. You know, and with yeah. service and with helping people. But the nice thing about a Telesummit model is we could offer it for free to anybody who wanted, right. and then people could purchase the lifetime access for a fee. And that was kind of congruent with our values, which is that we wanted to serve people first and then have any revenues come second from that. You know, mm -hmm. and, um, and so that we've held that model with everything we've done since, which is that we always try to offer something you know, that doesn't cost anything 
and then uh, hopefully be able to take it a step further and yeah. change people's lives. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, I really, you know, we, we've talked about uh, you know, uh, water shows the news with Huffington Post on water, that well, the water show is the Oprah of water. They were always right. you know, working off of somebody else's model. And that's something that Ryan has really emphasized is don't try to reinvent the wheel, right. that, you sure. know, that, that a lot of folks try to do that as they just, well, you know, I don't like the way the, the industry standard is doing it. I'm going to do it completely my own way. Yeah. And, and how valuable yeah. it is to do that. Now, what right. we see with summits is that that often can be a catalyst to an entire funnel. Mm -hmm. And we've worked with so many different areas of, of water that you know, we're looking at doing a water innovation summit. We're doing mm -hmm. a looking at a water and cooking and food summit. Mm -hmm. We're looking at water and, sure. and you know, utilities of the future. And each mm -hmm. one, where does the summit go? You start with summit. Build your list. Yeah. What, what was your list size when you started, and oh, what was it after was, the summit? It was, I mean, we had a few thousand beforehand. We we had yeah. thirty two thousand people in our first online summit, and then wow. since then we've had, you know, we our last one had over two hundred fifty thousand. So it's it's been growing, um, you know. But I think for for people who are watching, you know, whether or not you have a big organization, right. um, I think that the take home lesson here is number one, you can you can model off of successful models. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, and number two. Uh, it's possible to put your values into action mm -hmm. and also make a good living at the same time. You know, we, we live in a society where we, we often think that, that um, you know, we have to compromise who we are in order to succeed in the marketplace. A lot mm -hmm. of people are spending their lives toiling away flipping burgers, uh, barely able to feed their families. Right. And uh, what, what's, uh, what I get curious about is how is it possible to make a good living and make a big difference in the world at the same time. And I think that's kind of what the world needs from us right now. Um, because we, we live in a society where money has been made more important than human life, more important than the survival of our, our earth itself in some right. cases. And it's being used as a tool for exploitation and domination and even enslavement. And in this context, uh, for human beings to reclaim money as a tool that can also be a source of um, dignity, a mm -hmm. source of service, a, a way that we can be uh, well supported so we can give more. You know, that's, that's what social entrepreneurship is about Absolutely. at its core. And in the food world and in the water world, we have yeah. a lot of opportunity there because everybody eats yeah. and everybody yeah. needs to drink. So let's get good food and good water to everybody on the planet. Right. And there's, there's economic opportunity in that, right? Because right? uh, people spend a lot on food. In my case, I'm looking at food and I'm saying, how can we stop giving our money to McDonald's and Coca-Cola and Nestle and junk food companies? And how can we start putting our money into causes and right. food products and farmers that pay a living wage that aren't poisoning us, you know, and that, that give a damn about us, about our health and about their social impact. That's what Absolutely. we need, right? And uh, you know, so and, so I and think. And how can we use money to make sure we're at the table? With you know, yeah. there are a lot of people in the agriculture arena who are very supportive of sustainable food, of conscious food, right. Of, right. of you know, good eating. Good, you know, I was mentioning yeah. uh, Michael uh, Bowman, uh, you know, a good friend of mine, mm -hmm. went to Africa with the Savory Institute with mm -hmm. with Secretary Vilasek's son. Mm -hmm. You know, and and there are people who are very conscious of. The sorts of things that you talk about in the summit, yeah. who, who also have political access, who also right. have clout. You know, uh, um, uh, Mother Teresa said, "Where there is no margin, there is no mission. There is margin. There is a requirement for money mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. run these kinds of organizations to get yeah. yourself to Washington D.C. to testify, to get right. yourself to a, a conference like this to be able to speak." Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, we do the best we can with what we've got. Yes. Um, but, you know, th there are tremendous resources available to us um, mm -hmm. uh, because the world is crying out for solutions. Yeah. I mean, look, look at how much suffering there is. Every single problem, every single crisis we see is also a solution waiting to happen. Is all, there's also an answer. There's also something we can do. There are 700 million people on the planet who don't have access to safe, clean water. Mm -hmm. That's an incredible opportunity. A lot of them yeah. don't have the money to pay for it, obviously. That's part of the problem. Their governments don't have the money to pay for it. But people yeah. who care can, you know, we could, $27 billion could provide clean water to every single human being on the planet. How much, would, how much suffering would that end? Yeah. Right? There yeah. are, $27 billion sounds like a lot of money. Until you look at how much money is moving through our economy, you know, right, twenty right. trillion dollars a year in the United States. Like we could do this, like a fraction mm -hmm. of, you know, a fraction of what's moving if we cared as a species. Absolutely. And so it's time for us to care. It's time yeah. for us to put that caring into action and, and make a difference and act like our lives and the lives of those we love depend on it, because they do. At the end of the day, uh, it's not just someone else's problem. 
you know, because yeah. one thing that's happening with the rise of the internet and the growing of interaction across lines is that we realize we're all connected. And if we don't care for humanity, then we start to invoke resentment and bitterness, mm -hmm. which can fuel terrorism. Absolutely. You know, and so yeah. uh, when we act from a place of generosity and love and compassion, we help mm -hmm. to build a more compassionate, caring world. And, you know, integrity sells and integrity helps build brand identification. Right. So in this day and age, it's not just about how do you market, it's how do you stand for something? How do you live for something? How do you love for something? And when we bring that into who we are, I think we actually gain a potency, we gain a dignity that helps to move the world. And it also helps us to thrive. So thanks for your work. And, thank um, you, thank you, and, and all of our waterpreneurs out there are so excited to have a chance to meet one of the most successful waterpreneurs because I know so many of you have been inventing these kinds of things to save the world and how important it is to get your message out there yes. so that people know what you've done. All right. All right. Thank and you, you can so find much, us, Find us at foodrevolution.org. Yes. Again, that's foodrevolution.org. Blessings. Have a beautiful day. Thank you, watersystem.com. <laughs> <laughs>